And for those of you that are joining in as we are learning how to become, I don't know about you guys, but in our group last week, I think we fell in love with each other last week. <laughs> um, and so I am so looking forward to um, how we are going to journey together. The beautiful thing is already this year, I feel like with Pastor Chet's exhortation out of Exodus chapter 2, last year with, sorry, Exodus, um, Titus chapter 2, um, last year with the guys kicking off this year, and now literally, I believe the Holy Spirit is positioning us for such a time as this. I don't think that this is just happenstance that we're in Titus 2. I don't think that it is happenstance that the Lord put it upon um, the women's life ministry to literally like dive in to God's heart for his bride. Um, I believe we are being positioned. And so may we not only continue to glean and learn, but one of the beautiful things is that we get to do it together. I know one of the ways that the enemy tries to get me is to convince me that I'm alone. Not today. Look at this room. We are all in this together. That was for some of you. We are going to be diving in and taking a closer look at the beautiful Anna. She had three verses in the entire Bible. And I cannot wait to share with you what the Spirit has spoken to me personally. I am going to open up a little bit of my um, personal journal and let y'all in. So don't be trying to like post stuff and share stuff on what I tell you. <laughs> Because I'll know where it came from. But really allowing her, her testimony, her life, her love, to allow the Spirit to transform us. I know in our Bible study, we, it had a lot to do with our mouth. So I didn't do it. I did. Don't tell Andrea. I did. But it did. It honed in on the power of our words. It honed in a lot on just walking through, just do we bring life or do we not? And so as we prepare now to just look at Anna, may we allow ourselves to be transformed as we are moving into becoming a woman of impact. You ready? Yeah. Are you sure? Because I don't know if I'm ready. <laughs> We're ready. Everyone's ready. King Jesus... We come ready. You said in your word that um, it was the bride that made herself ready. And you took care of the rest. And so, Father, we ask that as we come with Bible, with pen, with heart, with the, the energy that we have after today and even going into tomorrow, if you see fit, Holy Spirit, have your way in this place. Give us ears to hear to what you have to say. Give us the lamp unto our feet so we know how to step. Give us understanding, God, that you, all-knowing, all-powerful, can be known by us. Who are we that you are mindful? But you've made a way. You've called us yours. And you've called us here this evening. So, God, thank you for your word. Thank you, God, that we get to once again come into your house and be transformed by it. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said, amen. amen. Becoming a woman of impact. You know, growing up here in California, literally born in California Hospital in L.A., I don't know if you can get any more California. You know what I'm saying? But growing up here in California, there's a lot of things that made an impression on my life. My mom put me in dance class when I was a little girl, so I learned how to shuffle step and be a tree, be a tree, <laughs> and continued to grow. And as I continued to grow, I literally was impressed by the Janet Jackson Rhythm Nation album. 
I was impressed by it. <laughs> it was smooth. It was clean. It was power. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but impact? Ah, impact came from Robin Mosley. Robin Mosley was my high school choir teacher. And Robin Mosley loved Jesus. But Robin Mosley lived out love for Jesus. She let us stay in her classroom. We're high schoolers. It's like during recess. It's like, go. Robin's like, stay. She listened. She watched. She observed. And she took us to the pre. This was when Harvest Crusades first started. Pre-crusade rally as a concert because we were a choir. Come on, genius. <laughs> Adonis heard the gospel and got saved at 16 years old. Impact. Robin Mosley. But Anna? <laughs> Anna's impact? She probably had no clue that we would be talking about her tonight. And she probably had no clue that she would come face to face with the true and living God. We are going to pick it up in Luke chapter 2. So if you can turn there for me, please. The word impact, to have a strong effect or influence on a person or a situation. Robin Mosley had a strong impact on my life. And I think we all probably have someone in our lives that have impacted us, either positive or negative. And we probably have impacted someone else, either positively or negatively. But the fruit of Anna's impact, and trust me, we will soon see, and as you have studied already, she had both. So let's look at Luke chapter 2, and we are going to pick it up in verse 36. Now there was one. Anna, a prophetess, the daughter of Phanel of the tribe of Asher. She was of great age and had lived with a, with a husband seven years from her virginity. And this woman was a widow of about 84 years who did not depart from the temple, but served God with fastings and prayers night and day. Anna, her name means grace, favor. Her tribe, scripture says, was from Asher. And Asher means blessed. Oh, how happy. Asher had a son named Phanel, which was Anna's dad. And his name, the name above all names, <laughs> the face of God. Can you imagine your dad's name being the face of God? He tell you what to do, and you're like, <laughs> all right, face of God. To come from blessed as part of your lineage, oh, how happy. To in your house, face of God. To literally being grace and favor, powerful. Now, it wasn't just the way that, like, it wasn't just her name. She lived her life this way. And the, the Holy Spirit, through our brother Luke, the author, tells us that she was a prophetess. A prophetess? We know what prophets are, but prophetesses? The girl version. The Blue Letter Bible gives this definition for prophetess. A woman to whom future events or things from others are at times revealed either by inspiration or by dreams and visions. In short, they spoke what God wanted them to speak or enlightened them to know and then shared the word with others. They spoke God's word whether anyone would listen or not, whether anyone would obey or not. They were obedient and emptied for God to use them and to be his mouthpiece, however he saw fit. 
one of the cool things about Anna is that she is the first and only New Testament prophet, prophetess who is given a name. Wait, Adonis, but I thought there were others. You're right. Good job. Way to go, Berean of the word. Because there were others. Philip's four unmarried daughters in Acts in the New Testament, 21.9. But we don't know their names. We just know that they're his daughters. All the others, Old Testament. Anna? Ah. But you know there is one more who calls herself a prophetess. And it's in Revelation 2, verse 20. And her name is Jezebel. And I think that's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> Anytime you call yourself a prophetess, just remember Jezebel. In verse 37, we read, And this woman was a widow of about 84 years who did not depart from the temple, but served God with fastings. And prayers night and day. Most scholars think that either Anna was married around 14 or 15 years old, and then her husband passed when she was about 21 or 22, which meant that she spent 61 or 62 years in the temple area, at the temple. 14 or 15 married is normal for culture. I know some of you are picturing some of your 14 or 15-year-olds right now and are like, yeesh. <laughs> but to go through the agonizing of losing your husband at any age, let alone 21 or 22, God. But it says that she spent those years in the temple area. Now, she could have been in bitterness. Are you kidding me? I'm 20 years old. Like, I still have my whole life. Like, this is traumatic. Bitter. She could have been self-focused. Whatever. I'm going to do it my way. I'm going to do what I want. And I'm going to live my life. She really could have been in pride. My life is worse than all y'all's. All y'all. Just like that, because that's how Anna would have talked. <laughs> Sometimes I just got to, like, give them a real thing. You know, they are real. Anna is real. Our, our attribute for this chapter and this time, I should say, is slander. God, this is your fault. Not just slander against all the people that she was around, but against God himself. You took him. How dare you? Slander? To falsely accuse with the intention of damaging another person's reputation. God? Was she in bitterness? Was she in anger? Was she in pride? Was she in her soul? I'm sure she had some soulish moments, but scripture tells us she was in the temple. Day and night. It, that literally did not hit me until today because I've been at church this morning and this evening. <laughs> and I was like, I get it. I get it. It's not a labor for me. It's not a, oh, my life is so horrible. I got to go to church. No. I get to be in this. Are you kidding me? In the temple. I want you to take a look. This is Herod's temple. This is what it would have looked like in, in Jesus' time. This area right here, okay, so like this is, where's my button? Killed it. Okay, so um, this, beyond those like golden doors, temple area. This is what they called the court of the women. 
Now, it's not just all the ladies have their own spot at the temple. No, it was as far as the ladies could get to the temple itself. Outside the outer court, that's where Jesus like turned over some tables and rebuked some people for buying and selling. That's where the Gentiles were. But here is where like the widow's might happened. Here is where we find Anna. And most scholars, they don't know if she like lived somewhere in this area or if she just spent a lot of her time there. But this you need to see was her Calvary Chapel, South Bay. Now, this is the deal. Right now, this looks like this amazing resort, so calm and peaceful. But this was, was like Venice Beach. I don't know how else to describe it. All types of crazy stuff happening in this area. The Sadducees, the Pharisees, the, the Zalots, like everything that we read about throughout like the scripture and what happened in that area. Like, you guys, it would have happened here. Wherever she lived, she would have walked through all of it for 60-some years. Can you imagine her being 30 and then her being, like, 60? And it could be like, wow, in my day, <laughs> this was a lot different. But it says that she served the Lord with praying and with fasting as tourists came, as religious leaders came, as buying and selling was happening, she was seeking Jesus. And not just seeking, she literally was seeking for the Messiah to come. The Redeemer. To redeem, Anna was real. Anna was real. She probably had some days to where just... It was hard, but she showed up. She probably had some days where she was just, will I ever get married? But she showed up. She probably had some days where it's just like, God, I don't even know if I hear you. But she showed up. This, my friends, 233 feet on each side. Those pillars, 86 feet tall, with fire on top. This was where she chose to wait, to seek, and to find her God. When I read this verse in Hosea, it kind of put some skin on. That this could have been even a desire of her heart. Oh, that we might know the Lord. Let us press on to know him. He will respond to us as surely as the arrival of the dawn or the coming of rains in early spring. Oh, let us know the Lord. I know sometimes on Thursdays, it's hard to get here. But you come to know the Lord. You're not coming for Pastor Chet. You're not coming for the worship team. You're coming to know Christ and him alone. And we press in to know. Thursdays, I don't know what it is about Thursdays, but by the time church starts, Adonis is ready to take a nap. <laughs> so I have to purpose to not go into my office and watch online. I'm confessing my sin to you right now. I go into that sanctuary, and I worship, and I sit, and I desire to know him. Does he meet me with bells and whistles every time? No, but I don't fall asleep because y'all call me out. <laughs> I press in to know him. And Anna longed, she longed to gaze, to gaze. Jesus even tells us in the story of Mary and Martha that Mary has chosen the, the greater thing. It was a gaze. And we see that Anna did that. And into her older age. I don't know if um, all of you have met, and you probably haven't, but I haven't 
she doesn't live here. This is my Graham. This Graham Lowe. Graham Lowe is 95 years old. I know, right? She is a wealth of everything. You know, Donna, it's in my day. I'm like, <laughs> she's literally looking at me, right? Or looking at the phone, and she's like, oh, I see my face on your phone. <laughs> I'm like, I know, Graham. I talk to my Graham a few times a week because I need wisdom. I talk to my Graham a few times a week because. The scripture says to honor the widow, to love her. And she loves Jesus. She accepted the Lord at 50. And her life, whoo, another day, another time. But every time I talk to my gram, she does not get off the phone, or we do not have a phone call without her saying, Come, Lord Jesus. She says, Donis, we are living in the last days. I said, for real? Are you sure, Graham? And she, oh. <laughs> she goes on. I don't know why she watches the news. Anyway, I'm like, Graham, turn it off. <sighs> anyway, another thing. Last days of Donis. We're living in the last days. People are saying that you better get ready. I'm saying, stay ready. I said, Graham, that is fire. <laughs> Graham, I'm going to stay ready. Because just like Anna was looking for the Messiah, we are looking for our reigning king to come back in spirit and in truth. And so, here we are, looking at Anna's life, we understand so far that what she has chosen was her choice. But a couple verses right before, if you would look, at, look with me, um, Luke chapter 2, we're going to pick it up in verse 25 and read a little bit about Simeon. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And this man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit was upon him. Consolation of Israel? Yeah, pretty much known as eagerly awaiting for the Messiah to come and rescue them from Roman rule. God, come, help. One of the things that I find fascinating about Simeon is that the Holy Spirit was upon him. When Jesus left, he gave us the gift of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit wasn't just like hanging out with everyone in those days. They were gifted from God. And Simeon, this man, the Holy Spirit was upon him. And he had revealed to Simeon that Simeon would not see death until the awaited Messiah. Can you imagine being told that you are not going to die until you see the Messiah? I'd be like this. <laughs> Expectantly looking. I tell, Graham tells me all the time before she hangs up the phone, don't you leave me down here. I'm like, don't you leave me down here because I will follow you with a strap. <laughs> Expectant. Looking. Waiting, believing. He believed. In, ver in John chapter 14, it says, These things I have spoken to you while being present with you, says Jesus. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. I trust and cling to and rely on this verse constantly because I don't even remember what I did yesterday. Remind me, God. Help me remember, God, what you have spoken. Because 
We have the gift of the Holy Spirit. So we're moving on. Simeon. Simeon then is hanging out at the place. He is spending time at the, on the temple grounds area. And it says in Luke chapter 2, verse 29, I believe, Lord, somehow by the Holy Spirit and his greatness, Mary and Joseph are walking with the baby Jesus to go, into, to, go to the temple. And the Holy Spirit says, Aha! Are you kidding me? A baby? He goes and he says, now you are letting your servant depart in peace. According to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared before the face of all people. A light to bring revelation to the Gentiles. That's us. And the glory of your people, Israel. As this was happening, you guys, this is a vast space. As this was happening, here comes Anna. Oh, by, the, by leading of the Holy Spirit? Yes. I was amazed that God, being a baby, not even walking, having to be carried, still led still instructed, still masterfully, bam, it's happening. It's not like we run into each other in the hallway. Look at this place. Are you kidding me? It says, and it happened. Anna came upon the scene as Simeon was holding the child, but it says, sorry, I didn't say that. I said that. Um, she gave thanks to the Lord. In verse um, 38, and coming in that instant, she gave thanks to the Lord and spoke to him for all and spoke of him to all those who looked for, Jeru for redemption in Jerusalem. One thing that blew my mind, literally. <laughs> I love when, um, when scripture confirms itself. It's Deuteronomy chapter 19, verse 15, and it says, A fact must be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. Fact. Messiah has come. Simeon, witness. Anna, witness. Since Mary and Joseph are married, they're one. Witness. Fact. Come on, God. Come on. And spoke of him to all. Can you imagine being <laughs> the first person to evangelize on the grounds of the temple? <laughs> the arrival. The Messiah has come to all those who looked for redemption. He's come. He's come. 60 years fasting, praying, showing up day and night and night and day. Is it worth it? Oh, you bet your buttons is worth it. She saw the face of God. And that's what happens, ladies, when we show up. Night and day and day and night, he reveals himself. We get to see his face. Do we always tangibly see him? No. Do we hear him? Yeah. Through one another, through the power of the word, through just being together, through the conviction of his spirit, is it worth it? Her belief was displayed in her behavior, and she got to see the face of God. 
she believed that God would meet her in her pain. She believed. I don't know how to figure this out except I'm going to go to the temple. I don't know what to do now, but I'm going to go to the temple. I don't know what God has for me, but I'm going to go to the temple. 60 plus years. I was convicted. How tired do I get? I'm going to go to church again. I got to be at all three services. Are you kidding me? These people get to go home. Thursday night, Sunday morning, hula class, outreach class. The temple. He is worth it. He's worth it. There are three things that I want to share with you that I have learned from Anna. And remember I told you earlier, like, my journal? So, again, don't, like, be blasting me. I learned that Anna positioned herself as close as she could to get to God. She fasted to hear him, to know him, to allow him to be her everything. Do I? Or only when it's a need? Do I do it to know him or do I do it because we have a ministry on fig? Or because Easter's coming? Is my seeking God event-based or is my seeking God God-based. I'm not telling you the answer to that. It's already too vulnerable. Anna was impacted by God himself. Do I sit long enough for God to speak to me? Or do I just give him my words, my worship, and I'm out? When I am sharing with someone, yeah, you know my pastor said. Meanwhile, the Holy Spirit's like, "Uh, Donis, that was me. Oh, I read in this book. Adonis, that was me. I just had this thought. Adonis, that was me. Impacted by God himself, do I recognize that himself is speaking to me, is desiring intimacy with me, wants me to know his heart, his dreams, his conversations? God himself. Am I moved to proclaim redemption to all? Or am I moved to proclaim a little bit of me in the midst of the redemption? A little bit of me? Oh, I totally understand. I've been through that. Jesus is enough. They don't need my story. He's enough. He is the redeemer of all things. He's enough. He doesn't need my experiences or my understanding or my what I read. I just need to give people Jesus and him alone. This brought conviction, yes, but it brought freedom. It brought freedom because it's like, you're enough and you're going to work it out. If Simeon and Anna could find you, you've made a way for me to literally just, (gasps) and you're there. Freedom. Absolute and total freedom. Anna's name, grace and favor. 
she started from a family of blessed to literally end up seeing the face of God. Adonis, my name is pagan in Greek. It's some man who got killed by a wild boar. Like literally Pumbaa. So I watch for those. But God says, no, Adonis, A-D-O-N-I is my name. It means Lord. And you add the S, it just includes the Father and the Holy Spirit, so it's plural. Totally redeemed it. I'm like, yeah, I am no weird man pagan God. The Lord is in me. And when people see me, do they see him? Do they see him? God, I want people to see you, not me. When people saw Anna, maybe the way that she prayed or the way that she served or the way that she was just consistent, they saw grace. They saw favor. And she saw the face of God. Wrapping up, in Psalm 18, verse 30, this God... It says, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord proves true. He is a shield for all those who take refuge in him. I believe looking at the life of Anna and even a little bit touching on Simeon, as we have been journeying through Titus chapter 2, I believe God has like literally opened up for us to see a fulfillment of what it looks like to be a spirit-filled man and a spirit-filled woman from Simeon and from Anna. But are we willing to wait? Are we willing to surrender our timeline to the author of time himself? I struggle. God, you told me this, and it's been five years. God, you told me this, and it's literally been two decades. Ugh. I've waited, and I love you, but I'm waiting. <laughs> Donna, grow up. Try 60 plus years. Try over 400 when I am showing mercy to those that have not received me as Lord and Savior. Adonis, grow up. I'll help you. But I need you to rise up. Our commission into Easter isn't just for Easter. I think that's all I'm going to say about that. The Messiah has come, and Anna got to see him. She, I believe, lived a life of a fulfillment of redemption and then shared it with all. It didn't say some. It didn't say just the ladies who were trying to figure out how to cook chicken another way. No, all. She lived a life redeemed. We don't know what happened after 84. That girl could have been married at 92. We don't know, but we will one day. But the one that she sought, the one that she talked to, the one that she entered in to intimacy with, the Lord himself came and, re and revealed himself to her. The only one besides Mary. There's no other recorded woman that saw Jesus as a baby. But Anna did. Positioned. Ready. Impacted. Moved. Proclaimed. And so, ladies, we learn from our precious sister, yes, but may we be impacted 
by our Savior, not because we're told about him, but we know him. We know him. We have an opportunity to know him. I am going to give you a personal challenge. Otherwise, I think it will be easily tossed to and fro. Adonis, I don't know if I hear the voice of God. Grow in the word. Just grow in the word. And believe you do. Because it's the deal. If you're wrong, he'll show you. (laughs) I always know when I'm wrong. Oh, the spirit told me not to do that. Oh, I felt convicted. Or, oh, I don't have a piece about that. You'll know. For one week, just believe that you hear the voice of God. And watch what happens. My um, family um, is still coming to know, I believe, coming to know the Lord. But God has placed this orphan in families. And I've been so blessed. So I have a family that lives in Texas. And they love me, but they think I'm crazy. But I'm okay with that. Because I believe the word. And the word says that creation groans and waits for the Son of Man to know who they are. Creation groans. The trees are like, did you know what I can do before the fall? Groans. So I go around and release creation from its groaning. I know. I do. I talk to plants. I see animals. I know who I am in Christ. I release you from your groaning. And you know what? I literally am like Snow White. (laughs) Squirrels come up to me and they just sing out. Birds come sit on my car and they just sing and talk to me. Deer come out of nowhere, and they're just like, I'm wild, but I'm free. Thank you. Because I'm choosing to believe and take the word as true. You're groaning for us to know who we are. So I'm going to tell you who I am. You know already, but I'm a daughter of the king, and I release you from your groaning. I'll send you guys videos. It's crazy. (laughs) Know who you are. Not who you think you are. Not who they say you are. Know who you are because he says who you are. Amen? Amen? Lord Jesus, we thank you. God, you are good. You are right. You are holy. You are true. And you are enough. As we gather in our groups tonight, God, Lead, guide, and direct our conversation. We want to be sharpened and encouraged by one another. We want to fall in love with you and with one another. And we want to shine, God, for your glory. Not for people to look at us and be like, oh, she's so sparkly. But literally for people to look at us and say, they have been with the true and living God. May you have your way in us this day. It's all we have, God. We're not guaranteed tomorrow. So we choose this day to continue to worship you in spirit and in truth. Continue to love each other the way that you've called us to. And to continue to take you, God, as your word. At your word. We love you. We thank you for Anna. Tell her we said thank you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.